Hi, today I'll show you how to use Arduino to make a single octave keyboard instrument. The main objective of this video is to create or at least replicate one octave, exclusive to seven natural keys of an actual piano or musical keyboard instrument starting at the middle C, but first let us briefly introduce ourselves to the world of music. Electronic keyboards, as most of us are aware of, play an important part in every entertainment industry, and some congregational events throughout the decades. These can replicate a wide range of instrument sounds starting from the piano, pipe organs, violin, acoustics, or even a Hammond organ and many more to mention which depends on its manufacturer and capabilities. The idea behind it, these are created using tiny electronic components such as integrated circuits, resistors, and capacitors that resemble the instrument that we see today as keyboard. The tool that we will use is Autodesk Tinkercad, one of the online simulation tools developed by Autodesk used to design 3D objects, electronic circuits as well as it caters programming of digital networks from simple projects to complex ones. Let us start with how we can use it as a simulation tool where we can virtually design our projects before interfacing with the physical prototype. So the question now is, how to start designing using Tinkercad? First of all, we need to know that Tinkercad is an online tool, so let us head to www.tinkercad.com and let us start exploring the tool. You shall be prompted on this page, let's assume that you haven't had any experience with this tool, technically you need to create your account before making any design that we have in mind. On the upper portion of the screen, just click, join now. After clicking on that, you will be directed to this page where you can create your account. Click on, create a personal account. After that, click on whichever you prefer, but to cut to the chase, sign in with Google is the best option to save some time. Then, just choose your preferred account, thereafter a window like this will be prompted, just click on, agree. After successfully registering to Tinkercad, you will be directed to the home. On the left side portion of the screen, this is where your workplace is located which includes 3D designs, circuit designing, code blocks, as well as lessons offered by Autodesk Tinkercad. There is also a card where you can see your classes if you have a school or team collaboration. Also, there is a quick card to see your recent projects which are labeled, Create Project, since nothing is created yet. Since this module is currently working on circuit design, other designing tools featured by Tinkercad shall be not discussed in the meantime. Please click on, Circuits, to proceed. After clicking on, Create Circuit, you shall be prompted by this which is the actual working space. Looking at the right portion of the screen, this is where you can click or drag the components that are needed for the design, a search bar is also there to facilitate the experience and help the user. And there you have it. You can now work on the project that you are most willing to do, through the help of this online simulation tool, you can design whatever you want at no cost. To begin with, we shall be familiar with the electronic components that we will be using in the project. First, we need an Arduino Uno. 7 push buttons, 220 ohm resistors, 11 jumper wires, piezo or buzzer, and a breadboard. Okay, let's go back to Tinkercad. We begin by placing the components needed into our workplace. We got the Arduino board, breadboard, buzzer, changing resistor values into 220 ohms, then copy pasting to have 7 pieces of it. Push buttons, placing into breadboard. Connecting positive and negative two ends of it. Modifying the color, red for source and black for the common ground. Placing the resistors in series with the push buttons based on the schematic diagram on the left portion of the screen. Rotating our board to easily access the pins. Connecting each of the push button to the source. Also, connecting the ground. And now, connecting each push button into digital input pins. Digital pin 2 connected to C key. Digital pin 3 connected to D key and so on. These will be assigned later to their respective frequencies. Connect digital pin 13 to the buzzer completing the circuit by connecting it to ground. Let us add descriptions on each key and we're done. The last thing that we should do is write the code to give instructions to the board. 
This is when we start giving the board instructions by inputting the sketch or code into the IDE. Let's just clear this one. The controller does not read the first few lines, and the developer only uses them for notations and comments to help the reader understand the flow and logic. This is the portion where we use the table on the left to assign frequencies to each of the keys. From the middle C to the final note, we place scripts that we only wish to run once in the void setup. Pins that correspond to keys are designated as input pins, so that we can keep track of when a button is pressed. The void loop is where we place our main code, and when one of these conditions is met, the while loop's instructions should be executed. If the middle C key is pressed, digital pin 2 will be high, indicating that the first line has been satisfied, and the buzzer attached to pin 13 will ring at the frequency assigned to the pressed key, which is the middle C. All of them follow the same logic, and as you can see, I added additional notations and comments to help you understand what's going on in each line. After we've written all of these, there's another instruction in the last line that says the buzzer won't be activated if nothing is pressed or if it's no longer pressed. Have you noticed how lengthy the code is? Well, there is a solution to that. To optimize the code and make it more efficient, we employ iterations, loops and arrays. We can reduce the number of lines from 33 to 11. How could you do it? Let's keep going. Here is an improved version of the code. As you can see, the lines have been reduced and it now appears much cleaner than the previous version. We should take note that this code is identical to the previous one in terms of functionalities but not in the coding lines. Alright, it's time for simulation, could you recognize any of this song? Yeah, you're right that's Twinkle Star. Here's another one. Wonderful, that's happy birthday. I hope you enjoy this video. You have a nice day. Goodbye.